And it's meant to be that way. Otherwise, I mean, you know, how boring would a game be if, you know, you knew everything that was going to happen and uh, everything was predictable and, uh, you know, you might feel a little uh, safer uh, on, on one level, but it wouldn't be very much fun. Uh, and it wouldn't be uh, experiences you could grow from, particularly. So I think that's what we're dealing with here. And uh, I'm guessing that there are a lot of my friends out there, people who listen to the show, um, who are feeling the need uh, for a little um, healing after the election we've just been through and the results thereof. Uh, I'm guessing, um, you know, a pretty educated guess, um, that there are a lot of my friends and people who are listening to this show who are fearful of um, what has happened, of uh, a Trump presidency and what that will mean for themselves, friends, loved ones, even people you don't know but uh, are concerned about. And that's as it should be. It's part of this game we've created. Um, it's part of the experiences that we have set out to give ourselves. So, in talking about politics, I mentioned, well, not too long ago, actually, a couple of weeks ago on the show, I was talking about this very topic and about um, how fear plays such an important role in it. Um, fear was fueling both sides of this election, as I mentioned, I think. Um, on the uh, Trump side, there uh, is the fear uh, that uh, was played upon among uh, working class people. Uh, the fear of, you know, immigrants taking over, of jobs being taken away, the fear of a country that's uh, in which. Um, they no longer feel relevant. And there's a racial element to this, so, so much of this was, uh, you know, aimed at and, uh, uh, you know, meant to stir up um, uh, white people. And on the other side was, uh, on Hillary's side, was the fear of Trump. Um, which was played upon to a great degree during that um, uh, during that uh, election. Um, you know, most of, if you think about it, most of uh, Mrs. Clinton's platform. You know, while she obviously had issues that um, you know she intended to work on in her presidency, but uh, in her campaign, most of what she talked about was. Uh, Trump fear. Uh, what's going to happen if this man becomes president? He's so unstable. Uh, he will, uh, you know, destroy the country. Um, that that was the main thrust of, of uh, that campaign. Uh, and so we ha have an electorate that's sort of divided by fear. Fear of one another. You know, fear that, uh, you know, a Trump presidency is going to bring about collapse of civilization. Uh, and on, the, fe on the, uh, the, 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 the Trump side, fear that liberal policies will ruin and bankrupt us all. Um, all of these grandiose uh, fear-based uh, approaches which um, create illusions 
that divide us, that play into the illusion of separation, that we are separate. And that's what uh, both of these campaigns were, were all about. Uh, there was a lot of illusion going on. Uh, and one illusion that people have been talking about quite a bit uh, were the illusion that the Poles created, uh, where um, the Poles are showing that there's going to be one result. The, the Poles are showing Hillary Clinton being ahead and going to win uh, the election and also showing Trump having uh, uh, you know, a very narrow path to victory and having that uh, turned on its head. It's very similar to what happened in, uh, in England uh, during the vote uh, uh, for Brexit. Uh, if you're not familiar with that term, uh, 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 you know, Britain voted to uh, remove itself from the European Union um, and it was a very contentious uh, vote there were a lot of people who did not want to leave the European Union uh, because of the benefits that are derived uh, for trade and and uh, also uh, currency uh, valuations and so forth and so on but uh, the fear of being part of a collective and the fear of losing one's individuality really rose to uh, the top in the vote. And those that wanted to pull away, to kind of pull up the, the drawbridge and say, no, we're not going to, you know, we're going to take care of ourselves. We're not going to be, uh, you know, led around by a bunch of other people. Uh, that won the day. And uh, it was a surprise to everyone because the polls had been showing that most people didn't favor a Brexit uh, strategy. But come election time, that's exactly what, what happened. So, you know... I. As I do come from this metaphysical perspective, I, I, I look at all of this and I see this elaborate game that we've created where we trick each other, we trick ourselves. Um, it's fascinating. Um, it's something that, uh, you know, is part, and I will get to how it plays into what I'm calling the transition era in, in just a moment. But, it, it, you know, it is um, something in which we are telling ourselves that the idea of certainty about anything uh, is very much in flux. We are reminding ourselves that anything can happen. We, can re we are reminding ourselves that uh, we can create anything we want to. And we are reminding ourselves that there's still a great deal of mystery, even though uh, we think we know so much, and we have so much technology and so much science that, uh, you know, uh, gets to the you know, uh, smallest details of things. What science knows, what technology does, what uh, religion knows or believes is the tiniest minuscule fraction of what we actually are. The great mystery that we are. And it's times like these that um, I think wake people up to that. Wake people up to understanding that uh, no, you don't know everything. In fact, you don't know <laughs> anything. And that all things are possible and anything can happen.
and uh, again we've um, created this uh, situation now where you know there's this, there's a great deal of there's a great deal of fear around what uh, will happen now uh, and as I mentioned, you know, in the earlier episode when, when I was talking about this, you know, the idea that somehow, you know, uh, a Trump presidency is going to destroy uh, this country, uh, you know, this country is uh, built to withstand uh, the encroachment of tyrants, the, uh, the flirting with um, demagoguery. Uh, it's built to withstand, uh, you know, uh, control by one uh, person or group of people. And while there are some challenges to that, particularly because of the huge uh, part that uh, our belief in money is playing at this point in time, while there are challenges to that, uh, this country is, as I said, built to withstand those uh, kinds of uh, boundary-pushing uh, events. And in so doing, uh, redefining, recreating who and, and what we stand for as a country and, you know, also who and what we stand for uh, as, a, as a world, how, what our connection to the world is going to be. So, this is part of that process. Um, now, how does this fit in with this transition era of, of change? Well, if you look at the election, and if you look at the election of Trump, it's actually quite, uh, quite interesting. I've said that what's happening in the transition area era of politics is the growing awareness and understanding uh, that the political system doesn't work, that it uh, needs to uh, change in a way that uh, does the good, the most good for most for the most people, and that politics, uh, as an as an end of itself, uh, simply uh, becomes um, fossilized and in, incapable of doing anything. And so, in the transition era, what happens is that people become more aware of as people become more aware of their oneness, uh, they become more aware that they are part of this government uh, and that they are part of uh, the rules that are made. So in this election, uh, all of the rules, all of the things that uh, were told to people that you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't be that way, you can't talk that way. Um, that this is how politics works. All of that was thrown out the window. Beginning with uh, the primaries on the part of the Republicans. Um, and Trump was a major player in, in, in that, in saying that, uh, you know, doing what he did um, in defying the conventions of uh, of politics and what politics has become, and in doing so, uh, throwing it all up into um, disarray, if you will, so that on both sides of the spectrum, everybody has got to come together. Everybody got to figure out, uh, you know. what the new uh, what the new situation is what is important in governing and people have to become more involved 